Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is probably not the biggest surprise press conference I've ever had, uh, because I think the word has been out for quite a while that we're very interested in this. But I think one of the most important things to understand is that this is our first ever transition of a club team to a varsity sport. Because of that big move, it's an opportunity and a necessity for the university to take the appropriate steps because it is a university and a community that supports athletics. So the president uh, put together a committee of representatives around the community and also the state uh, for our committee, and I need to read them off, and, and they've all worked so hard. Our chair was Harriet Hoff. He, she's a, I didn't, this was a fantastic title. She's a senior uh, special assistant to the office for faculty, all right? And she's our chair. Uh, she contacted me the other day and said, well, uh, I'll call you back, I'm in the OR. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Well, I forgot she's a physician, so that took care <laughs> of that. Uh, Kyle Brennan, he's my uh, deputy athletics director. Phil Klinger on our board of trustees. Sandy Hughes, uh, she's the uh, budget and analyst from the park building. Uh, Howard Lehman, who's uh, our athletic Ad advisory council chair. Zan Johnson, the faculty senate. Laura Snow from the president's office and development and Barb Snyder, who's here over student affairs and has been a tremendous support for me all the time and in this, po in this process. And I would be remiss if I didn't say Kyle Brennan did the yeoman's work of putting this all together, both in the, putting the financial gift together and also making sure that we've had as smooth a transition as possible. Uh, one of the things that we have to do and choose to do and want to do as a university is provide as many opportunities as we can for students. And I need to make sure that the, the lacrosse men that play in this program, I can make you a guarantee. When you're 50 years old, you're gonna run into somebody and they're gonna say, tell me about yourself. These are what you're gonna say if you have a family. You're gonna say, uh, married, have children, I was born here, here's my job, and I played lacrosse at the University of Utah. Yeah, maybe, I yeah. can promise you. Those of us that have had that special privilege is something that you'll remember forever, uh, and it's an experience that's unique. You'll be part of 450 athletes on a 32,000 campus. Barb is the one that's in charge of making all these wonderful students at our campus and also involved in the club sports. So if you think about that opportunity, I'm pretty happy today to say for generations we're going to have people that are going to end the sentence describing themselves that they played men's lacrosse at the University of Utah. Our vision as an athletic department and a university is, is to be innovative leaders. I think this gives us a chance to do that. Uh, this will give us 20 sports, which puts us right in the middle of the Pac-12 in terms of number of sports. It will help with our academics, and we feel quite clearly it will engage the community. Uh, they've just added high school uh, lacrosse in the High School Activities Association. Uh, adding a sport today is a very difficult thing. It, it happens, and there needs to be a lot of steps that went along the way that this committee has, has done and worked with in terms of interest and community. Also, you don't do a sport today without an endowment that can help get that going. That is the model around the country for adding new sports. And we are so gracious and appreciative of the donations that we've received. I know people in the community, because I'll be knocking on your door, will continue to help us more and more on making this program an A+. So I, I really appreciate that. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to have success uh, we've been very fortunate that Brian Holman is here uh, with the great experience that he's had and, and the type of person he has and the type of program he will run. We'll be starting in 1819. So it's my pleasure to turn the time over to Brian, the new head coach at the University of Utah, starting in September of 18. <laughs> Brian? <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Hill. I appreciate it very much. Um, it, it's an absolute honor to be sitting up here in front of everybody. And, um, you know, you're just going to have to bear with me here a little bit. It's, this is, this is a, a long time in the making. So um, it was funny. You know, I always talk to the team about stories or jokes, or I, I always try to bring some things into light. Um, 
and, and as they know, and my assistants know, I'm not, I'm not very technologically advanced. So this phone is, is really a, a telephone for me. And uh, I do like to text. Um, but one thing I do like to do on this thing is take pictures. And um, I was funny. I was the other day, I was scrolling back through uh, the photos I had. And I came across the first pictures I took uh, when I visited the University of Utah the first time. And ironically enough, um, the date on those pictures was June 18th uh, of, of last summer. Um, so almost one year to the day was the first day I set foot on this unbelievably gorgeous campus and really felt that this could become something extremely special. Um, so I, I'm honored to sit here uh, in front of all of you. And, and Dr. Hill, I thank you so much for all of your hard work uh, and your support there in this process. Um, I'm going to start thanking people, and, and, and you just, again, got to bear with me a little bit. And, uh, you know, it starts with the good Lord of, of, of leading us here, my family and um, myself, um, and guiding us through this process. Um, and goes on to, to my beautiful wife, Lori, uh, of 30 years. I tell the boys that all the time. I'm so proud of that. That's actually <laughs> more proud of that than probably anything I've done in my life by far. Um, and, and, my, and my awesome kids, you know, Matthew, uh, came home from uh, Baltimore today, uh, last night, to be here. And Sydney just graduated from University of North Carolina, a superstar in her own right on a lacrosse field, but uh, uh, probably the toughest kid uh, that I know, uh, having played through two ACL tears and, and never missed a beat, never redshirted. And then, obviously, uh, my other son, Marcus, my middle son, who, who I'm blessed to be able to have as part of our staff, which is really an honor. And, and that's, that, that, again, is something that's you know, beyond belief to be able to do something um, like this with, with one of your children is, is unbelievable. Um, so uh, thank you all for allowing me to be here. Uh, thank you all for allowing me to chase, chase dreams. Usually works the other way around. My family encourages me and pushes me to chase my dreams, and, and I hopefully I do the same with them. Um, I want to thank my staff. Uh, I mentioned Marcus, um, and, and uh, Will Manny is here. Adam Gittleman had to leave. Uh, he's actually heading out to recruit, and he has a, a, a game tomorrow with the, with the MLL. Um, these three guys are here for a reason, and it's not because they're three of the best lacrosse players in the country. Uh, it's not because they're three of they're three captains of the of their MLL teams. There's only nine teams in the league. We have three captains on our staff. Um, they, they were chosen to be here because they have the energy and the commitment and the passion and the love and the drive uh, and the spirit to coach young men. Um, and I'm obviously was familiar with Marcus, uh, you know, having raised him. Um, but but that's not why he's here. Um, he, you know, he, he, he's here because of, of those reasons. And and I truly believe um, that we have one of the best, if not the best, staffs. And I think my players, our players, uh, would agree wholeheartedly in, in the country. Um, does that mean we're going to win? No. But that means we're going to we're going to work hard and we're we're going to have the parts of the puzzle that we believe that will allow us to compete at the highest levels. So I thank you guys for making this journey a leap of faith, man. It's a, it was truly a leap of faith uh, to extend yourselves to come out here. And what you've done in this community so far is, is be, beyond belief. And that will continue to grow. So I appreciate you guys, and thank you for being here. Um, I want to go to, to President Pershing and, and the Board of Trustees. Um, um, Dr. Hoff and, and Barbara and your committee, and Kyle and, and the committee, and, and Dr. Hill again. Uh, thank you uh, for allowing this to, to, to happen and bringing our family uh, and, and our staff in, into this unbelievable university. And I say that um, I'm fortunate, you know, I have had a year to work here and I don't really work here. And as it's really been, uh, it's really been, it's been awesome. It's, it's been great to meet the people and get a feel for this school. And, and as I felt it from the day I came out here, um, the potential for the University of Utah to do something special in the sport of lacrosse is as high as any place in the country right now. And, and we will do our best, uh, our darn best, as a staff and as a program uh, to uphold the standards that Utah has set. And, we'll, and hopefully, we'll raise the bar a little bit higher. Um, so I appreciate all your support. And, and, and I'm very grateful to, to be in front of everyone today. Um, I want to move on to the, to the founder and the founders. Um, you know, without the support of the community, we have well over 100 donors right now in the Founders Club, and I think that's, that's climbing on a, on a regular basis. Um, you know, this was interesting because 
it's almost like it's almost like putting a team together and and playing a game and having groups prepare you know you have the administrative piece and and then we have the the you know the the, the community piece um, then we have the staff and then we have the players and and over the course of the year all of those pieces continued to focus on on the end goal on, on what was right and how are we going to accomplish this mission together and I think that power really was the major influence on, on bringing um, all of this together in, in fruition. So uh, everybody in the community had a role, every single person, from the little kids back there wearing their U-Tat and their youth lacrosse stuff. I love it. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, we're going to have more of that. Um, when, when Denver and Carolina roll into town, you guys will be able to come out and see the highest level of lacrosse besides the MLL in the country. And I can't wait to see all those young kids in the stands um, really appreciating what, what this sport will do for us. Um, so the Founders Club, without it, it would have never happened, never happened. Uh, I want to thank the team this past year. Um, what, 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 you know, put some smiles on your faces, boys. We had, we had a blast, all right? I mean, it was the craziest, wackiest thing I, I, I might have ever been a part of, and it, and it taught me so much. Um, I appreciate everything you guys did, the effort that you put forth. Um, I think you had a huge, huge uh, difference in, in this process. The way you handled yourself on the field, uh, the effort that you put in day in and day out was more than you guys bargained for. And, and, and we're gonna continue to build off of that. You know, we've only scratched the surface. I mean, literally just scratched the surface. So, so be prepared, all right? I warned you guys coming back in the fall. All right, I love those smiles now, but you probably won't be smiling about September the 6th. All right, so, so I appreciate the effort. I appreciate the honesty. I appreciate the loyalty and the trust that you guys showed our staff, again, to ingratiate us into this community and making us feel at home. And the support staff, I know Coach Teagle's here and Megan is here. Um, you know, you guys were fantastic. Uh, Tim Haslam, I mean, gosh, I mean, how many hats do you have, Tim? Like 55? And, and so, so, you know, uh, again, not, not the keep going on but I could, I could go on forever and I don't want to miss people um, um, that were very close to making this work but so all the pieces came together um, I, I think we're all blessed to, to be able to, to pull this off and then ultimately I just want to thank the lacrosse community in general um, I don't think the people in this room realize how important this move is to the our sport and the growth and for all these young kids um, westward that that technically don't have a home and and you know, I've heard a thousand times out on the recruiting trail and out talking to parents, you know, gosh, we hope this happens. We pray this happens. This will give us another opportunity uh, to play lacrosse at the highest levels without having to go back east and, and, and you make it a lot easier on a lot of people. And we hope that comes to fruition. Um, but the lacrosse community in general has been extremely supportive of the text and the emails that we've gotten all across the board uh, from, from almost everybody involved. And that's what makes our sport special. That's what makes our sport unique. Um, it is a community sport. It's a sport about trust and spirit. It has a spirit inside of it that lives on um, past. And what Dr. Hill said earlier, you know, when you go on and say you're a Utah lacrosse player, when you meet a person that says they're a Marquette lacrosse player or a Michigan lacrosse player, all of a sudden there's a connection. And that connection happens instantaneously. And, and that is one of the beauties and probably the strongest parts and the, one of the reasons we love our sport so much. So all those things in combine, uh, led us to this point and uh, I'll shut up now and uh, but I appreciate everybody so much and uh, and just thank you for being here and, and thank you for this wonderful opportunity Great. Great. So. Uh, before I turn it over to Liz I did want to recognize another member of the committee that's here you, usually our committee sits as a team Laura Snow's over there. She's on our team, so I, I looked here for the team, and she's and Pierre's here, so that really shows his family's here. So I appreciate that. I just don't always notice everybody from here because they're supposed to be sitting together. Okay, Liz. Okay, uh, media questions, and remember to ask for the pass mic. Coach, uh, how big of a jump is this going from club to the NCAA? And do you anticipate it'll take a couple years to be competitive at that level? Uh, it, it's a big jump. I mean, the, the reality is, um, you know, you're, you're, you're going through about three layers, three to four layers uh, of competition to, to reach the highest level. Um, so, yeah, we, I recognize that. I, our staff recognizes that. Uh, I think the advantage that we have is that we're all, we're all very familiar with that level. 
uh, and we and we we know what it takes to compete there. So it, do I anticipate some time to get us up? Yes, that's reality. Um, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Um, you know, but we're we're gonna we're gonna do everything it takes to get there as fast as we possibly can. And and forgive me one second, Liz. I'm sorry. Two people. I I, I just I'm remiss in in forgetting. Um, Kyle Brennan and Manny Hendricks. Uh, you two guys were were. I mean, without your faith and 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 support and and just kind of holding me together at times, this would have never happened. So I, I greatly appreciate all all that you uh, did for me during this time. So thank you for that. So I hope I answered your question. You did. Thank you, <laughs> yeah. Dr. Hill. I got a question for you too. Um, I understand that uh, Larry Scott kind of endorsed the idea for you guys to add the sport. Obviously, to be the only team in the Pac-12, and you're kind of in an island with Denver and Air Force out here. Do you anticipate the Pac-12 will, a few more teams will join and perhaps the Pac-12 will have a, a conference for you guys to play in? Uh, I don't want to press, put pressure on my other fellow ADs. We are in a, <laughs> we're in a bunker together against the world. Uh, one thing I wanted to say before, some people have asked the same question and I thought this morning I said, how would Coach Witt feel if he had the entire western part of the country to recruit? And nobody else could. I thought oh, that'd be pretty cool. Right. Um, Thank you. Yeah. yeah uh, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah. That makes it a little nicer. And in some ways, that, that's why we wanted to be a leader in it. In a way, is we think uh, there's other schools that have kind of on the edge of want to do that. I know Larry's very supportive of lacrosse. Uh, so we're hoping that happens because everything we do, we want to make sure that uh, we're an innovator in the Pac-12, and and they need six teams to do that. So without putting pressure on others, I, I know it's a high, high interest sport in the West, uh, which puts us in a really good position. So uh, Larry, Larry actually is one of the people that met with the committee and talked a little bit about. They had meetings all the time, it seemed. And so hope that answers your question. Um, what, what will be the initial uh, uh, scholarship offering for you guys? How, how will that ramp up for, for you? Yeah, we're, uh, what we have is we're starting off with a basic program. There's a, a 12.6 scholarships allowed. We'll probably start around eight and start to, to move up through the program. So uh, that's what we plan now. Uh, in a program like this, you want to make sure you grab the best opportunity. So the limit by NCA standards is 12.6. We may not start at that, but at the same time, uh, when you run into the greatest guy in the world, you say, well, why don't we just go to nine scholarships? Because this is going to be the person that comes to the promised land. You know, I've had those before. We just got to do this, and it will be the answer of all time. So, um, so what do you think this program can bring to a D1 school? Um, in, in, in what sense? You know, what, what what do you feel like this team can bring to a D1 school? Um, well, there are many things. Um, you know, let's just start academically. Um, you know, lacrosse, uh, I think we're second in the country now, maybe behind gymnastics and, and graduation rates of all NCAA sports. Um, so, so, you know, that's number one is the educational piece because that's the first step in the process is qualifying our guys to you know, academically, are they the type of student athlete that we want to be here? Um, so I, I think we'll bring a high level of academics. Our, our GPA uh, minimum uh, uh, on our team as an average will be a 3.0 and above. Um, so we're going to strive and we'll achieve that. So I think that's number one. Uh, I, I think we'll bring a sense of community, a large sense of community. Um, you know, uh, I, I think some of that showed up in a couple of our club games this year. You know, we put a lot of people in the stands and, and I think that's only going to grow. Um, because part of our responsibility is back to the community. That's a huge part. You know, so, so our players being involved with the youth leagues and our coaches going out and giving free clinics you know, and, in, and encouraging and engaging that community and those kids to want to wanna be a youth and be part of our family. Um, so I think that's going to be a fun part of the process. Um, and I think we'll bring recognition to the university. I think our plans are to compete at the highest levels and to compete against the best of the best and to have what we believe the makings of one of the top programs, if not the best in the country. So along with all that comes some level of recognition, right? Um, so 
I think I think that's one of the reasons why we're excited. That we're, we're, it's not it's not what the university did for for us. It's what what we're going to end up in turn doing for the university in in the long run. So it's a great partnership. So, coach. <laughs> I like it. It's like the Jerry Springer show. <laughs> uh, Hope not. Dr. Hill, thank you uh, for uh, not closing the door on this opportunity for the sport of lacrosse. It's been exciting to see it grow here in Utah and uh, your leadership and taking this chance and going out and being the furthest West program um, is greatly appreciated. Uh, my question is perhaps for another press conference someday, facilities. Uh, you have a very tight campus, and I'm sure that was a major concern for you. I wonder if you could give us any insight into what you hope might transpire for this team in terms of uh, a lacrosse facility. And then my question for Brian is, Brian, some other MCLA teams have made this jump, and Michigan comes to mind. Um, slightly different coaching situation, mm -hmm. because you have coached at the NCAA level, and they kept their club coach, and he has just recently resigned. Yeah. Just curious about your hope for what you could accomplish in your first five years. You want to go first? I'll go first. Yeah, go first. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, it, it, you know, it's not, it's, it isn't easy. I mean, if it was easy, everybody would do it, right? Um, but I, and I think that's, that's, again, part of the challenge uh, that incites our staff is, you know, you know what level can we do it? Um, and, and I do believe, Mace, I do believe uh, our experience at that level will pay dividends. Um, no discredit to Michigan, but but there is a big difference in coaching club lacrosse your whole life versus coaching Division One lacrosse level your whole life and then moving down. You know, I think it, I think it's a lot harder to kind of work your way up that ladder. Um, so I think what I'm hoping, uh, what I believe, is our experience um, competing at the highest levels. You know, North Carolina and Hopkins for myself, North Carolina for my son. University of Massachusetts for Will, University of Virginia national championships for, for Adam. Um, like I said earlier, I, I, I think we know what it takes to, to play in that arena. Um, but time will tell, right? Time will tell. And uh, we'll take it one day at a time and try to build the strongest group of young men we can. Um, and, that, and that's the process, because it is a process. So does that answer your question? Yeah. All right. Thanks. In, in regards to facilities, the, the team also uses right now a lot of the facilities on campus. Uh, Campus Rec has opportunities, as we all know. In the press release, we mentioned initially, and, and you have to make that all part of the puzzle, but we have a, a soccer, women's soccer stadium right now that we'll be using. The soccer team plays in the, in the fall and the, uh, their games in lacrosse in the spring. Lacrosse can also practice more on an artificial surface than a soccer team again, so they'll use the McCarthy field. The university has a master plan of which uh, it's again, uh, you know, the buildings, as you go around this campus, there's a lot of building going on. But all of that will blend in because the university has been very, very supportive of understanding that athletics uh, needs the appropriate uh, uh, facilities to run Division I program. So right now we, we have some things in place uh, and those will be what it will be for the next few years. But as the university unfolds more and more about a master plan, there may be opportunities for us to to grow as the whole thing grows but it, it's it'll it'll work out just fine that way for our initial program so chris i was just wondering when can you start when can they start offering scholarships immediately or do you have to wait till it's officially an ncaa sport i'll check his compliance level on this one no <laughs> I, I think that we can't sign oh gosh kyle help me if i'm wrong uh we can't sign people until uh well, they can't have a scholarship until 1819, but I'm not sure when the signing date is. Do you know for the yeah, for the fall of 18? Yeah, so it'll be it'll be beyond, it'll be on that. So the national letter, the letter of intents gets gets signed in the fall. Okay. All right. So that fall of 18, they would sign national Good. letter of All intents. Right. Check that one off. Got that one done, Brian. <laughs> Uh, in the press release, you mentioned a lot of research went into this. What kind of research did you guys do, and why lacrosse? Well, it, uh... <laughs> sure, you're the head of the committee, please. <laughs> 
who, I, I don't know right who asked that there. question. Yeah. Oh, so uh, we started off being asked to look at um, adding a new sport in general, um, and lacrosse was one that there was an opportunity to add. Um, and then we spoke to pretty much everyone you could. So um, Steve Smith, Larry Scott, Brian Holman, donors, um, uh, Nona Richardson to talk about Title IX. Uh, we looked at financial stability. We talked to Fred Eslin about how, what a donor agreement would look like. Um, who am I forgetting? <laughs> I think that's our, so we pretty much talked to everyone we could. And I would say when we started the process, the committee as a whole, we sort of had a little, what's the temperature in the room at the start? And the temperature was, mostly we could see a lot of problems that we didn't, we weren't sure this was a good idea. And as we talked to everybody, we kept getting more and more, this is a great idea column answers, and the this is a bad idea column answers went away. And um, so I think we did a very thorough job of talking to anyone who could be talked to. <laughs> Any questions? Okay, thanks everybody. Uh, thank you. Awesome. Thank you.